Hello everyone, it is Joe here from Omnipoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. And today it's time for Excadrill Delmise, something that is basically just a token metal deck, because a lot of people are saying that metal is the hidden key to this current format, um, because we hit for weakness on two popular archetypes in Sylveon GX, as well as Ninetales, which looks to be its popular uh, archetype. And at the same time, Excadrill over some of the other choices is going to be played to try and have a good um, Garbodor matchup because the numbers work out quite nicely and you're predominantly a non-EX deck so you don't mind about putting a load of items in the bin because you're just going to trade on them anyway at least one for one, sometimes it's a two for one in your favour uh, because you can choice band Lysander things which obviously they can do as well but we have Skyfield and we can like discard our EXs and also because we can hit 70 with Maclaw with our buffs from Delmise we can actually KO Trubbishes not only in the early game, but also like late game we can poke a Trubbish and then they have to promote a new active, then we can poke that for 70, even if it's not a KO. It's like a 1.5 trade uh, on your non-EXs, so you should be overall pretty favoured in the matchup. So, um, this was an archetype popularised by the Wossy himself, Ross Gilbert, and uh, a few people have toyed around with it. It's in a really weird state where there's a lot of different public opinion about this. I've seen budget decks been made for this, I've seen it just be disbanded as a terrible idea, which I have to admit I thought was the case as well at the start. Um, and as well some people are lauding it as a great medical right now. I think it's between Rogue and a good medical, I think it does have some good matchups, and I've been toying around with the build a little bit and been having some fun, so I thought why not show off a wacky deck on a lovely Friday like today. So that's enough rambling about the archetype, let's get into the card choices. First of all, a 4-4 line of Excadrill. It's a shame that we have this Drillba, it's really bad. 60 HP with a 2 retreat cost, uh, nothing great here. And also it's a fighting type, uh, because obviously in the games it doesn't become metal until it evolves, but that means that we can't play shield energy in the deck, which otherwise could be nice, because it can give us some good tank ability. Uh, but because we have Drillba, which is... Um, just a fighter type, we're just going to go with basic metals so that we can get attachments onto him. It actually benefits us anyway because I'm choosing to play elixirs in here, which I'll get into in a moment. So let's have a look at our main attacker in the deck, Excadrill. It's a 110 HP metal type with that um, Omega Barrage trait, which is the main reason why people consider him at all. This Pokemon may attack twice a turn. And of course, this isn't an ability, this is an ancient trait, so your opponent can't turn this off. You are always able to attack twice with Excadrill, which is pretty good. If you do take a knockout with your first attack, they promote a new Pokemon. You can do no other action but attack. Um, so even if you take a really cool prize that you want to play down, because you've already begun the attack phase of your turn, all you can do is attack again. Um, and here are the two attacks he has. The first is for a single colorless energy, Dredge. Allows us to search the deck for two energy cards and attach them to this Pokemon. Shuffle your deck afterwards. This is really nice for setting himself up. Typically, this is only ever the early game option. Uh, you can see I play elixirs in here. You don't want to dredge unless you really have to. The dredge option is great against energy denial decks like Sylveon, of course, because they even if they can deny all your energy, you can just dredge three energy back on from the deck. Well, you can attach and then you can dredge for DCE, or you can dredge for two basic energy. Um, and if you have Choice Band plus your Delmises, you can still uh, one-hit KO Sylveons even from an Excadrill with no energy on it. So that's very strong. It make, it does make Sylveon a pretty positive matchup. The only issue being that we have lots of heavy retreaters on here. Um, but I'll get into that later. Um, so yeah, Dredge is a really cool option. It's normally only ever early game. You have to think that you don't want to be dredging in mid to late game scenarios because your first attack from your barrage is wasted. So really, Maclaw only then does like uh, between 50 and 100, which is like fine, but you don't really want to be doing 50 to 100 for a 3 energy attack cost. That's really weak. So bear that in mind, you don't want to dredge too often, but in the early stages, it is going to be great for your setup. And then Maclaw is the attack uh, that does the damage in here. For a Metal DCE, we do 50 and isn't affected by resistance. It's a small little nice thing to have, no resistance. I think Tapu Koko is the main relevant one right now um, that would otherwise resist you, and that's good to get around. And being a Metal type, it means that we can get the buffs from Delmise, and of course we play Heavy Choice Band in here. So we're looking for Maclaw to get up to 90 damage, really. 90 is like the key for us. 
because if we can Mac Claw twice, that's 180, which is the magic numbers that we need. And um, just naturally, being a Metal Titan means we have a good handful of matchups. Um, I actually really like this in the early game as well. There's quite a few non-EX Pokemon right now, evolving non-EXs, which have between 60 and 70 HP. So being able to Mac Claw really early on in the game can often mean you take two prizes on their lower forms very quickly. Thanks to Delmise, we get the buff of damage, so oftentimes I've been beating Greninja players just because I've been out-aggressing them in the early turns because I've dealt with two Frogadier turn two, turn three I've dealt with another one and a Froakie, and they're down to like one Greninja to try and carry them, um, which is still hard to get over, but it's really hard for them to recover because it's almost like an Articuno where you just race so far ahead in prizes really early. And because Excadrill has 110 HP, the Greninja player can't deal with it until it gets into a break evolution anyway. So it takes them a lot of turns of Excadrill just sort of punching away uh, with no response coming back to you. So Excadrill is really good against some of these evolving non-EX decks. There's Lorantis as well, where you can get through a couple of Formantis turn two um, going second. So the deck is really good if you go first um, because you get the extra attachment in and you can start attacking against these non-evolving Pokemon. But even going second, we have Lele Wally, so we can try and dredge Maclaw. And going second on turn one, we can still fire off like 70 plus damage if we uh, get some Delmise into play, fortunately. So, yeah, very aggressive card. I like it. Its resistance is relevant as well, because Garbodor is the main type, uh, the main Psyche type out there right now. There's also Espeon GX as well that you have to be concerned about. Um, so this resistance is definitely relevant. The fire weakness is obviously horrible. Volcanion is really bad for us. Um, but um, sometimes you just pound through anyway with early aggression and he and uh, Hex Maniac. But typically that's going to be an awful matchup because they just stick with non-EX Volk and just start power heatering for KOs. So yeah, pretty cool card. Then we have the three downlines. I've mentioned it a lot. Its ability is Steel Worker. Your Steel Pokemon, uh, their attacks do 10 more damage to your opponent's active after applying Winston Resistance. Um, this is pretty cool. We play three in the deck. I think four isn't too necessary. Uh, three will oftentimes be enough when you combo it with Choice Band. Uh, you go to 80 with the band, so you can go up to 110, which is 220 in here. Um, I don't feel like you need to do 240 too often. Um, I think Decidueye is already like a really hideous matchup. The way to win is that you get early Mac Claws and just pound through Rowlets and Oddishes and whatnot early on. Um, it doesn't really involve having the fourth Delmise in play because honestly you won't have the bench space a lot of the time even with the sky fields we just won't be able to access it so really I think three is the sweet spot when we have recovery from stretcher and rod I think it's fine uh, we are playing double Tapu Lele GX it's of course a huge card in the format and this deck also really appreciates it wonder tagging for the early Bridget is like phenomenal for this deck and any other deck that tries to evolve um, so we get multiple Drillbur, and we also get Delmise into play. It also means that we can go for those turn one Wallies when we go second and try and get really aggressive with our prize racing, which is pretty cool. Um, then we have two Shamini X for some bursting draw. We need to dig into DCE quite often. Just keep digging for combo pieces, Delmises, choice bands, more Pokemon. We have to continually reset up because we are just a stage one Pokemon, so uh, Shaman is going to help us out. And finally, one Oranguru uh, with the Instructability. The deck is super aggressive, and um, just like any aggressive deck, you get punished heavily by N, and we are a combo deck, so we need to keep drawing into things, and Oranguru is hopefully going to help us do that. Um, and because we play Skyfield already for a high bench count, uh, we will use Oranguru to put him on the bench to go over the five barrier of bench Pokemon, so when Skyfield is removed, either by ourselves using Field Blower, or by opponent field lowering, or by them countering the stadium with their own stadium, we can get rid of our own EX and GX Pokemon. A second quick note I should mention on Tapu Lele is actually that it's obviously a fine attacker. We're playing DCEs, energy drive's good, and um, it also means we get around Glaceon with this guy, so bear that in mind. Right, onto some items. We only really have space for one field blower, but the deck is quite reliant on abilities, um, so timing this nicely against other Garbodors is going to be handy. The good news is the baseline is 50 for Matclaw, uh, so we can Lysander Garbotoxin Garb and just hit it twice with Matclaw to KO it. So we have double Lysander and Field Blower to get around ability lock in that sense. Uh, it's also going to get contest the stadium more again. It can, can it can get rid of our own stadium, which is going to be nice. Um, pretty good one of. I wish there was space for a second, to be honest. 
Uh, we're making a 1-1 split of Rod and Stretcher. I like Rod because we're comboing off with Elixirs, so recovering some Metal Energy is going to be helpful. But it's also helpful against things like Sylveon and other Mill-style decks. And Stretcher's just more immediate. It gets you straight away an Excadrill to keep attacking, straight away a Lele, a Delmise for Maths, a Shaman or whatever. So I like the split. Then we're playing the three Max Elixir. It's something I haven't seen in too many Excadrill lists, but I think it's really important. Um, you don't want to dredge with in this deck. Like, other than turn 1-2... Do not try and dredge, it's just too slow. <laughs> so, Max Elixir, so you can be Max Loring every single turn. Uh, it's kind of like Rainbow Force in that we're playing the thin line of 8 3 Elixir split, and uh, I feel it just works much better so you can continue to be aggressive, which is what the deck is all about. Sitting there dredging and hitting them for like 80, it's going to do nothing for you. So, uh, I like the Elixirs to keep pounding away with your Excadrills. Uh, we have 4 Ultra Ball, 4 VS Seeker, the standard counts of everything. Only the 2 Skyfield, we only need to get it into play for like one turn so we can overbench, get more drill, uh, Drillba down, get more Delmise, get that Oranguru down on the board. It means that on our early turns we can go really crazy with Burst, we can like bridge it and then we can also drop down Shaman and draw more cards and hopefully get into future uh, pieces which is going to be cool. A couple of one-ofs, Hex Maniac. Um, we don't need to hex too many things, to be honest. Um, it's the only way we can try and have an inkling against Volcanion. It's obviously going to help get rid of Item Lock, if that is the case, and against Decidueye. Um, it's also going to help against Greninja when it does get to the mid to late game, after you've just <laughs> just kept smacking them with Maclaw. That's like the only way to win uh, against Ninja, just pound through Frokies and Frogadiers for the first like three turns. But Hex is hopefully going to help you stabilize. Um, it's good against a handful of things, to be honest, it's pretty strong. Uh, then we have a Wally, which is the sort of burst potential, the aggressiveness. It's a really nice one of. Teammates, I've mentioned a lot that the deck is combo based, similar to the likes of Gyarados and other stage one builds. I just love putting teammates in heavy non-EX decks because you're going to get value from it a lot, of, a lot of points, especially when we need to hit so many specific cards like uh, DCE. Uh, then we are playing the one of N. I've said so many times the deck is hyper aggressive, so we don't want to shuffle draw our opponent too often. And then we have a couple of important two ofs. Bridget is a two of. Um, although you can lele this turn one, um, it's too important to prize. So I'm going to be playing two of them because I think it's really absurd. And even in like mid game scenarios, Bridget isn't too terrible because you can just like super rod in some knocked out Delmise or some Delmise you've had to discard early on or whatever. If Skyfield's ever bounced, you have to get rid of these things. Um, you can like super roll them back, bridge it to get like double drill the Delmise back on board um, for damage and for future attackers. It's not terrible mid game to be honest. Uh, then we have two Lysander as well for picking off easy things. Maclaw with choice band and uh, enough Delmise down does KO Shaman, so um, it's pretty cool. And uh, then we're just playing three Professor Sycamore to keep digging deep. Uh, then we have the choice band for the math fixing. Two floatstone is our only switching cards. Everything has a two retreat cost or less other than Excadrill. So we're banking on paying retreat with DCEs on top of these two floatstones. I feel like Olympia is too slow for the deck and I don't really want to make more spaces for floats or like ropes or anything. So trying to be cheeky with the two count mainly, mainly because we're trying to rush things down. And if it's ever Excadrill getting stalled, we can just dredge ourselves into attacking range or retreat range if we need to. So, uh, well, not retreat range, but for future turns, you can retreat because obviously you've attacked with dredge. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, and then the energy is quite high. Uh, 4 DC, 8 metal. Um, it's really just so that we complement the elixirs and hit them every now and again. You don't have to rely on it every single time, but popping off one or two of these keeps you ticking along nicely throughout the game. So that is going to be the list. I think it's fairly concrete. I don't think there's many options in here. Um, the only thing I will mention is the evolutions, um, the Ancient Origins ones, like the Flareon and the Vapor, uh, yeah, Vaporeon have been uh, banded around as b potentially being something. The idea being that Maclaw can do 90 to a lot of things with Choice Band, so you can ramp that up to times two. Um, but a lot of the time, Vaporeon's not going to help Volk too much because I think the inherent issue is the non-EX that wrecks you. So even if you one hit through a non-EX, it's kind of awkward. Um, because they can just bring up other things, then you just punch them for like 80, then they retreat into their Volk and still KO you. So Vaporeon's not that strong. Flareon I also think is not that strong, because you can't really one-hit Decidueyes, because you won't have the bench to have Flareon, Excadrill, 
another extra drill to be set up all your Delmise and having that many Pokemon sat on your bench is just easy prizes for them. And like I say, to try the way we try and beat that deck is to rush them down uh, with Mac Claws really early on and take cheap prizes while they're still lower forms. Uh, obviously, if they go first and hit the nuts, I mean, Excadrill's not that strong of a deck, to be honest. You will lose to Decidueye quite a bit, so bear that in mind. Uh, so yeah, Evolution Package, I don't think is worth it because just too clunky. And uh, the typings that you change aren't relevant enough for winning you the matchups. So yeah, that is the deck. Let's get into the ladder and have some fun with Excadrill, the token metal deck that I thought I'd throw up on the channel. You can see as well, I was testing a bit of Metagross as well. Um, Metal's something I wanted to put onto the channel just because a lot of people are making waves about metal decks should be a part of the format because Volk seems to be getting weaker. Um, but then again, it may come to the tipping point where everyone feels safe to play heavy grass and heavy metal decks and then Volk just turns up and still does fine. So we'll see. It's an interesting balancing act Volk has to do in the meta because of Greninja and Lapras and uh, just Vaporeon being splashed into evolution decks and Garbodor's an issue. So um, Garb has some stuff to worry about. Oh, and Ninetales. There's all sorts. So we're trying to use that to our advantage, that uncertainty in the format to bring out a weird rogue deck. Our opening hand is terrible. Um, so we will pray for an N from our opponent. We see a Taurus in their active position. I'm going to attach a Psychic. Put down a Trubbish. Double Trubbish. And a pass. Okay, we got Shaman. Shaman is a good card, I heard. Let's let Sander to draw more cards. Let's do this. Let's play down as many as possible. Shaman for three. Hope to hit Lele. Always hope to hit Lele for Bridget, basically. Uh, that's not too much help. I'm not going to play the Elixir. There's no real point. Uh, Taurus can hit 60, which is a real shame. But at least this force is like Floatstone attachment from him. Uh, annoyingly, we can't pay Retreat to protect our Drill Burst. So we'll just uh, go for the Fury Swipes here. I could have potentially attached the DCE um, to Retreat into Shaman. But I think DCE is like pretty important. And if we are cheeky and manage to um, not get knocked out this turn, this could be really beneficial. See Ultra of the Moon, so maybe that's his main means of retreating, which means it's likely that we'll actually tank hits here. He is going to play the end though, so probably digging for Floatstone. Maybe he plays a split of both. Um, we'll see what our opponent can come up with here. Oh, they do hit Float, that's a real shame for us. They are going to go into the Trash Alanche Garb as well. And we see the Taurus come up. And we're going to hit with Horn Attack. Well, at least we have a fresh hand and we have a Bridget in there, which is going to be nice for us. Not much else going on in this hand, to be frank. Uh, okay. Let's Bridget here. Is Orangaroo the Pokemon I want to throw into the active for this Tauros? I think Delmise is more important math wise. Gonna hold off on the stretcher because we could well lose another drill by next turn. Which is the same reason I'm gonna hold on to Max Elixir. Tricking into Delmise is awkward, but I think it's the play that we have to go for here. Okay, okay. Appreciate another N. <laughs> Even though we like want to cash in on elixirs soon, uh, evolving into Garbatops in here would be so upsetting for me. Okay, can I see a sycamore. Cho choosing not to end, even though we had shaman like looping. Interesting. And just the horn attack for sixty. Ooh, Lele's a good card. I'm gonna start off with Elixir here. Oh, the dream. Dream big. Alright. Let's go for it, I guess. Need to hit Floatstone. Excadrill. 
Choice band. It's a lot, but we're going to get digging here. Okay, there's that skadrill. Let's get rid of these. I think we just keep digging because I want the combo and I want it pretty sharpish. He's hit floatstone choice band. At the moment we're doing 6120. It's, yeah, not enough. Let's keep shaman digging. We still have Lele to find ourselves a supporter if need be. Okay, okay, halfway there. Super Rob gets some value. I'm not going to Lele pre Sycamore, I don't think. Because uh, there's no. Uh, maybe there is a supporter I want to put in the discard. If our other Bridget's in deck, I want to get rid of it for an extra thin. No, but Wally can go. It's an extra card we thin this way. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. Okay, we got there. We got there. We did it, team. Okay, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. I'm putting on choice band. So I think we go to 12 because we have resistance to go down to 130. So hitting this is awesome. We're now in great shape with Excadrill. Field blower is one, two, three, four. Not great here. So we're just going to get the double Mac floor in. Get a cheeky KO on Tauros. Go a couple prizes up. They need to find field blower to respond KO on our Excadrill. If not, they're in a lot of trouble. One field blower is already in the discard, so. Some don't play two, but most do, so. We'll see what goes down. Alternatively, he can Acid Spray, because he's already got a DC on him. And that would be fairly irritating. You can see a Hex from them. It's actually a really good Hex. It stops Steel Worker from two-shotting the Garb. Interesting, interesting. So, I think I'm just going to attach Bridget here. Get some more steel workers out. I'm going to map claw twice. It means that next turn I can dredge map claw to KO if I miss energy next turn. I still feel fairly ahead in the game. Until they hit a field blower, basically. Well, actually, they're going to KO this Excadrill to go down prizes again. Okay. Ooh, they play a Mew? What? Why, though? <laughs> Here comes Trash Alanche. So this is where, like, the 1.5 KOs come into play. We're going to take a KO in, like, a half this turn. Or next turn, as long as we hit DCE. Uh, now we're in range of all their garbs, so we're going to start playing all of these cards. How bad is Sycamore here? It'd leave us with one Lysander remaining. Which sounds pretty bad. How bad is N if we miss DCE? Not terrible. Okay. I also think that uh, Lysander Dredge attack, like something else, isn't good enough, so we'll just end. 
Hmm. Well, we can get a couple more, well, one more draw in. Not the dream. So it's just a dredge KO here, which is a real shame. I said earlier on in the video that dredge is like the nightmare. We already have a metal here, so we'll just go two metal active. So we have higher chance of getting DC. Next turn. But yeah, this is awkward. Especially because we've already played uh, Rod and Stretcher. Getting a job off the prizes is helpful. So this one goes down. I really don't want to see a Hex this turn. Hex would be the worst thing for us. The Link one is also quite bad. I think I actually get rid of VS Seeker over Drillba here. I need enough Drillba to get me through the game. Ah, uh, okay, okay. We will have enough bench space for Drillba once he KOs the active, so. Let's just bank on Oranguru to save our skin. Save the bacon, save the day, save the team. Gonna see a shaman from them. Is this our third choice band going into the discard? Yeah, that's pretty awkward as well. Sadness. Okay. That missed DCE. So bad for us. Gotta get pretty lucky here off the instruct. Nope. Not lucky. So we're doing 50, 60, 70, 80. Hmm, this is where he goes ahead in the race, which is sad. Not worth keeping. Okay. Oh, shame. We missed things this game. We missed a lot of things. Handy work. Oh, unfortunately missed some some potentially really devastating cards there. He missed all the energies and the excadrills, so that's good. Okay. So we're taking a KO here. How many guards has he been through? This is his second. And Super Odd's gone. Hex in our discard pile. Gotta get around this Mew somehow. Do we still have one Lysander? No. Comes to be a seeker. What does this do? Thirteen paralysis. Okay. Oh, handiwork. Let's go. GG. <laughs> Whew. Cool. We've been through both float stones as well. Eskill's retreat cost is really bulky if I want to just drop Lele and bang it. There's an attachment to Trubbish. And a choice band to Mew <laughs> for some reason. You can see an Ultra Ball as well. Thinning as much as they can here. All the Mews, I wonder what this is for. Setup's going to draw them quite a few cards here. Just a pass. There's VS Seeker for game. That's incredible. We got there. 
we got there. A little fortunate that they got double tails at the end, but their first one got double heads, so... You know, swings and roundabouts. Right on luck there. Mr. DCE, which hurt us mid-game. Um, but, overall, we did get there over the guard, which is cool. Um, the elixirs obviously came in handy. Let's find another game. Beating a fairly standard Garbodor there. The Mews were a bit wild. They weren't playing Dramper as well, which is surprising. But there's basically no point where we hit their bench, so they would have to play their stadium down and stuff. Nice early win for us. Let's see if we can keep rolling. Keep dodging Volks. Got to dodge and weave the Volk. You've also sort of got to keep your head down for Decidueye Plume as well, but maybe, who knows, we can hit a uh, Sylveon or a Guardi or something. Not this game, it looks like. I think I saw Lightning in the opening slide, so maybe it's Tapu Koko. Koko's a pretty hard matchup. Yeah, Fury Belt's one of the reasons for that. Oh, that's not a great start. We have Bridget Energy, though. We'll take it. If we don't get End, of course. Okay, it's Jolteon X in the active, so it's likely going to be Tapu Koko. I did beat one of these with Excrude earlier today, but it was a rough matchup. We have the Hex, so if we have to two-shot through one Coco, it should be fine if we can Hex on that turn. They Ultra Ward away N and Sycamore to find Lele, so they want a different supporter. What do they want if they're a Coco player? Don't even know. Oh, it's going to find another N? That feels weird. Gonna see an elixir. That one hits. And then just the end. I'll take it. Ultra all the way and end to find an end. Genius. This is a much better hand. We have the Bridget energy, but we also have plays for afterwards. Having Shaman inactive is still super rough though for Coco shenanigans. Field blower. Okay. Let's go team drillba. So we ignore resistance, so we go 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Yeah. So then we just have to get rid of um Fury Belts. And we're still on this hand. Seems good. Likely going to see a Coco come down this turn. Taking a swift two prizes on us. And that will hurt. Especially if they find Fury Belt. If they don't find Fury Belt, it could be great news. Could be the best news I've had all week. Ooh, mail for Skylar. Skylar isn't Lysander, so I'll take it. Because if he Lysander's Drillbar, I'm very sad. We could just attack with Lele and Lysander KO. Yes, it's a Skylar. We take those. Take those all day. Gotta love the vulnerable early turns of stage one decks. It's just beautiful. One thing I should mention actually about playing the fourth Delmise is you're better against other stage one 90 HP Pokemon. Because you can one hit like Vespiquen and stuff. Um, which means you can like hit them twice with Mac Claw. I just don't think they're popular enough to play the fourth Del Delmise. Additionally, you could play Kakui as a one-off supporter. Uh, but I'm currently not doing that. 
So we're going to find ourselves Delmire's hit. Uh, sorry, Excadrill. Waste no time. Alternatively, we need to draw a lot of cards here. Could just go Orangaroo and draw more cards. Drawing cards is good. Let's do it. Even if it is pretty sycamore. Yeah, drawing cards is good. Can confirm. Man, that is really bad. We went pretty all in there and got hideous results. Well then, let's pass. <laughs> Whoa, that's scary. Well, they didn't have it last turn with their Skylar. So maybe they don't have it this turn? Field Blower's getting rid of Choice Ban, so they're not like Sandy KOing. Otherwise, the Choice Ban, the Field Blower's an absolute waste. So we got away with murder somehow. Next turn, we could teammates for like. Field blower Excadrill as well to KO even if he has um, Fury Belt. Broken. Broken plays. Hmm. So choice band onto Lele. Is he going fourth energy? Ace of Paradise. I don't agree with people who play this card. I don't agree. I've been punished by it like once or twice, but it really doesn't make much sense to play. It's such a fragile card to have. Okay, let's see the Sycamore here. Oh, he's debating Ninja Boy, it looks like. Instead, just goes for the Sycamore. See an attachment to Jolteon. Whoa, didn't take the prizes. It could have gone. I guess it was like quite all in to do that. It's annoying in terms of our turn, because I might be sacking off a lot of the S seekers here with Sycamore. I was kind of banking on the teammates to be honest. Alternatively, we can go real slow here and just attach pass. Oh, it gives him too much energy on the board. I can only carry this Jolty on if I. Is this before weakness? Oh, after we. Oh, uh, resist does nothing. Okay, but it's after. So we go ninety ninety. Mm. This is an aggressive deck. Let's just go ahead and do it. I think sitting with Drillbers and giving him enough time to get more elixirs and stuff established. I think it's bad. I also want to get um. The what's it called? Something developed. Can't remember. What was I gonna say? I definitely had a plan. I can't remember. Hex. There you go. I wanted to dig for hex. I'm uh, gonna keep this open as a slot because I want to have elixir targets. I'll just grab no card here, so we get an Orangaroo draw. Maybe hit Floatstone, get lucky. Oh, Elixir's a good card too. Not when you miss it. There's the Floatstones though. We'll pass. So now they need to have Coco Lysander in hand, which they didn't have last turn because they would have put Coco down and taken the prizes, I think. Okay, here's Lysander. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 down to... Yeah, so they need to attach another energy here or find Coco this turn. Don't forget resistance. Oh, does this get through resistance? Ah, it gets through resistance. Okay. Good news. You can forget about resistance. Oh, they're all in. They're all in. Love going all in. Oh, another chance of elixir. Oh, I was really dumb there. Because I was always going to teammates as well. That was really stupid. I got excited, okay? <laughs> that was such a bad play. Whoops. Okay. We just go DCE choice band. <gasps> no. Don't tell me. 
No, we prized one. Oh, they're going all in. We're so easily punished. Just not today. Oh, the sadness. Oh, no. No, no, no. So our players changing. Means we're gonna dredge attack. And we're gonna grab these cards. Sixty. Okay, here's Coco. Obviously, taking a knockout with any attack he chooses. You can see an ultra ball. Oh man. Lack of choice band was bad. That was just a misstep by me for sure. We once again did miss things this game though. That big sycamore where we just got nothing. <laughs> Feels good man. Okay, so they're digging. They probably want more elixirs and energy to get attached because they're still in a bit of a precarious spot. Okay, another one to Jolteon. Oh, they hex us. Gross. Look how sad this damage is. <laughs> Where? Okay, let's leave. <laughs> That'll do. Okay, Coco's hard. But it's like non meta deck versus other non meta deck. <laughs> so, this is meant to be an anti meta thing. I don't mind losing to Coco. And that was in weird circumstances as well. Ah, sad. Okay, let's get another game in. That's the risk you take when you play anti meta dot decks. Oh, are we really up against another Coco? <laughs> what is this meta? Coco meta. I've missed the memo. Strong start here. Going first as well is good. I would really appreciate if my opponent chose an active Pokemon. Okay, here we go. Let's go, it's good drill. Look how much fun they're having. Especially that one, you're loving it. Oh my god, opponent's taking forever. Can't be that hard of a decision. Can't be. Can it? I don't know. Maybe I'm just frustrated that I have to face a second Coco in three games. Okay. Compose yourself. Okay. Attaching everything here seems really safe. 
Floatstoning a, floatstoning a drill bar. How bad is it? It's quite bad. It's like wasting a drill bar. But there's always the chance he goes attach elixir elixir cocoa. It's a low chance, but it's not crazy. That chance is greatly reduced if they have to weave Lysander into that mix. So. Grab Tapu Lele here. And have a really nuts turn one. I'll draw a card first. Just the one. Another drill, but means I'd probably go for N here. Just think if I want to super odd now, I don't think I do. We'll just get N. Good opener, though. Good opener. Main issue currently being that we don't have Skyfield for Delmizers. But it'll happen in time. <laughs> Another one playing Aether Paradise. Oh, guys, stop it. I mean, it obviously just slaughtered us last game, but... Shouldn't be doing that. I played Blower Double Stadium. <laughs> I guess it's no different to just playing like three stadiums. But other decks play so many more. Some decks play like three and two Blower. Ah, tut tut tut. Such a reactive stadium. I'm not a fan. Okay, here comes Coco. An elixir fails, which is really good for us. Let me see Sycamore. Surprised they chose Coco over like any other Pokemon they could have put down. Because it means they need to. They have less likelihood of finding another Coco in this turn if they hit like more elixirs and such. Double Fury Belt. Here's another elixir. Whoop whoop. Okay. We have some things going on here. We don't want to go too aggro here. I think it will be a Sycamore though. It's just, I think I'll be chilling on the bench with our stuff rather than just going in. Going ham and eggs on them. Really want to hit... Uh, Field blower or Skyfield is actually our ideal here. None of those cards, none of that stuff. Do get double Excadrill down. Lots of energy in the discard. I'm still not ready to super odd them in because we haven't got Elixir in hand or anything. So we'll stay active with the cheeky pivot. Force them to have. Attachment, Coco, Lysander, all in their five card hand. There's Attachment, Ultra Ball. They could have the, the exact combo they need. Oh, playing Pikachu EX, what? What is this madness? Here comes Coco, in all its glory. Okay. Just gonna be a Sycamore. So they've gone pretty much all in. Sounds mad to me. We need to hit Skyfield really badly next turn. Need to hit Field Blower. No, we don't need to hit Field Blower. Just Skyfield. Skyfield and Delmise, please. Make it happen. Alternatively, we promote this. Lele for Hex. Dredge attack. No, 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 no. Let's not be ridiculous here. Top deck Skyfield. Oh, no. Never lucky. Let's get some energy in. We still have Elixir. We have a couple of Elixirs to try and hit. It's a 
attachment feels pretty bad. It's attached to Lele, I think. Oh, I like could teammates here. Yeah, teammates is great. 50, 60, 70, 80. Then we just go Skyfield, uh, Delmise. Oh, I went past the card I need. Ta -ta -ta teammates. And this is where Eighth of Paradise can hurt you. You think you're safe. And then you just get Matt Claw twice in the face. And you get real sad, real quick. Nice. They've lost a few elixirs as well, so. They're probably in a spot of bother here. They need to find their last two elixirs with five lightning already in their discard pile. So their chances are significantly worse. Even if they do get the KO, we have Choice Band in hand. We have the S Seeker in hand for teammates players next turn. So I feel like this is locked down. Excadrill doing work this game for sure. Patient approach uh, paying off. probably not taking their time to promote a Pokemon. Okay, here's Max Elixir number three, which hits. It's an attachment as well. There's the A for Paradise. We can get rid of Shaman. Lele. What's Lele going to grab here? Probably N. I would guess N. Yeah. Going to be good old N. Another Fury Belt comes down. Well, that's a weird hand that we've drawn into. Better with the Sycamore, of course. I think we are Sycamoring here for sure. Um. No stadium replacement this time, so we can actually KO this guy. Uh, I'll Ultra Ball some dead weight away. Could potentially have taken no target there to get a maybe Oranguru draw next turn, but. Oh well. N has done things for them. And we're just gonna pound this guy for 60. Thanks to Aether Paradise. Again, coming in handy. <laughs> oh, God's sake. Love it when people get rewarded for playing cards that shouldn't reward them. Here comes Coco. And a big Sycamore. on how quickly we get over this Coco as to how we win the game. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Typically play 12 energy. Maybe play super odd as well. Oh, Elixir coming in. Also hits. Nice work, Elixir. Wow. Full Fury Belt. For some reason they choose to bench it. Oh my goodness. They play the XP share as well. Why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they? Mm. Let's go and lay lay. Oh no, 
the sycamore. It's good and bad at the same time. It's not good this turn. We need our DCs. It's energy drive. I really don't understand them putting down the Coco unless they have the fourth one in hand. They get Kukui off the trainer's mail. They can GX attack us this turn, of course. See VS Seeker. Oh, Lysander. They're going for Excadrill. I'm okay with this. I'm very okay with this. Okay. Two, four, six, eight, ten. 12, 14, 16, minus 30. So I have to put the metal energy on unless I draw choice band now. Ooh, teammates is a card. Seems that hex isn't in the discard pile, it seems like the card I'm playing. So. I think I'm going to get Field Blower. So we do 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 for exact knockout. So we can attach elsewhere. And then I just get the Rescue Stretcher to get its control. Okay. Well, neither, neither of those are options because I apparently don't check my deck. We can get this to get rid of the stadium. <laughs> Um, but that means that uh, EXP share still alive. This is awkward. This is definitely awkward. I think it. Oh, Lysander's not even good because he's got f choice uh, field blowers on every. Oh, what's it called? Fury belts on everything. Hmm. Two, four, six. I think we just do this. No, 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 no. We do this. Okay. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fifteen, down to twelve, which is all we need. If I attach, it means we can get GX attacked if they uh, have their fourth Coco. If they have access to their fourth Coco, which is currently in the discard pile. Um. How risky am I feeling? Six, eight, ten, thirteen to fifteen. No, that's just energy drive. Let's be a wimp. Let's be a little girl about this. I've seen weird cards like Peak Chewy X, so I'm certain they're playing other weird stuff in here. <laughs> like a Brock. Like Brock into an Ultra Ball or something. Sounds like... Oh, look, that's a, those are the cards I wanted from teammates. Look at the Laid Supporter. See Kakui to draw some cards. Attachment to Coco. Shaman for one. Well, that was like a lost condition. I don't know why they put that down, but sure. Never punished. See an Ultra Ball for Jolteoni X. And the scoop. Nice. So we took down one of the two Cocos we faced. Let's have one more game because facing two Cocos isn't much information on how the deck works. We haven't hit any fairies or nine tails yet, but also we've not hit any Volks. So actually, we've not hit much many meta decks because two of them have been Coco. So it's been waste of like half an hour. 
Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. Maybe more. I don't know how long these games have been. Oh, um, no. Hit the Volk. Hit the Volk. Sadness. Well, time for a masterclass from me. In my first five games of Exodrill, I faced three Volcanium. I did manage to beat one of them. It was very jammy. We'll see if we can do it again. It involved hex chaining my Sander Map Claws, Enning, those sorts of things. Oh! What fire type are they playing? Fliptini? Probably Fliptini. Oh, uh, well, it's um, it's a better matchup for us, for sure. So we'll take it. I'm just going to go for N for my supporter here. Because we have an elixir in hand, we can just do this. Play down our hand, and then just N away the Excadrill. Okay. Nice hand here. Uh, retreating Lele plays around Blower, but I have to play around like Aqua Patch Elixir nonsense at the same time. Looking to use Ultra Ball for Shaman next turn, I think. Oh, Blower. Blower in hand, eh? Feels good, man. There's Articuno. Coming on in. Attachment to Tauros. Hmm. Just the pass. Well, they didn't get in, end into the best hand. Unless it's mad bluff skills. I mean, they only need attachment. Lysander to KO the Drillber if I go all in here. So maybe I have to ultra away band VS. I definitely don't want to end because I'm, I'm pretty sure the hand's not good. Do I get rid of Band VS or Energy VS? I think I keep the Band. Could Lele for Sycamore instead, actually. Probably safer. Uh, I mean, Shame can hit a supporter. Right. Let's just be a madman. Let's be greed central here. You know when I said we could hit a supporter? Oh, I don't want to end. Damn. Sadness. Alternative is to attach here. Bridget? That's not a great alternative. I could Wally. Then we really run out of draw. Mm. Wally seems safe. Well, not bench a drill book because I might need Bridget to draw us cards <laughs> via our Anguru. If we draw an instant to play card off the top, we can get one draw by attaching Bridgeting or Anguru playing the insta play. Uh, maybe that digs us out of the hole that we're in. Let's see how truly bad their hand was. Was it a bluff? Or are they drawing poorly?
If I hadn't hit field blower, we would have KO'd this guy. Which is mildly upsetting. See an attachment to Articuno. Here we go. Oh, they play two. It's metal weak, bruh. Careful. Careful now. Uh-oh. Sleep flips. It's time already for, for sleep flips, huh? Oh, the dream. The, oh, Bloatstone's even better. More dreams. It's an insta-fake card. Oranguru value. So many dreams happening at once right now. So many dreams coming true. Top deck and or other supporter. Oh, Elixir, we'll play you. I think you are a good card. You're improving our top decks as well at the same time. Good guy, Elixir. All right, KO that real quick. Give him an awkward choice of what to promote. If he promotes Tauros, we just pass, but I'm fine with this. It's Manaphy or Lapras that's getting a smack. Yeah, we just pass. Hmm. Right, there's an elixir from the opponent. On to Lapras. It's going to be a collect, I think. Yeah. Oh, I don't have enough bench space for uh, for another Delmise. I mean, we're not going anywhere with this hand, but it means Lapras is out of range for now. Maybe third Skyfield is necessary in here. My first few games, I never felt it was necessary, but at the same time, I was hitting it early. We hit one early this game, but we had to get rid of it. Okay, just to collect. Get themselves out of this awkward spot. Or hope to at least. Choice band will be held, I think. This will be played because we're not one shotting anyway. And we're trying to strand this Lapras so we can't promote something else next turn. Cool. Also means that next turn, if we get another insta play card, we can actually get an Oranguru draw. Always thinking about the draw. Got to be greedy with this deck. This is like such a greedy deck. <laughs> you have to go all in quite a lot. And we went all in very early on. Alright, why'd they even start attaching to? They need to find another Lapras to start doing shenanigans. Choice banding Articuno. Oh, they have Lapras. Okay, stage one achieved. Does this collect really not help them that much? Doesn't look like it has. Fury Belt. Fairly annoying. Okay, it has helped them. They have Sycamore. Shout out to this max rarity Lapras player, by the way. Everything's reversal gold. Even the energy is sick. Broken. They attach Lapras to retreat? Seriously. That just happened. And a pass. So we'll just take the prizes here. Uh, not going to put down the choice band. Although N is a concern. Our hand is so bad that I still kind of want an N. <laughs> um, and already a field blower gone. But because this is an ability focused deck, they may well play two. So I want to keep hold of the choice bands. Our opponent has no energy in play. But they haven't played any uh, Aqua Patches yet. And only one Elixir. So they're still in it for sure. 
Promoting this Lapras doesn't seem right, though. Straight off the bat. I thought they would have been aquapatching to it. I think I would have promoted Articuno there to attach once to it and then start trying to, like, aquapatch the bench. Unless he's trying to go all in with some crazy flips, which I'm all, all up for. I'm down with that. Okay, there's an attachment. Don't tell me this is to collect. You can't have drawn into another DOS hand. There's Victory Star. Scaring the life out of me, thinking I'm a thinking you're a Volk. None of that, Victini. None of that. I wonder if they'll play Tech Fire for V Flame. <laughs> Almost certainly not. Lysander. Mm. Stalling Senpai. It was that it's quad lapras all along. All these other Pokemon are just a lie. How many DC have we been through? One. I don't want to attach this energy anywhere, I don't think. <sighs> Let's start drawing out of this funk that we found ourselves in. This is obviously an exploitable weakness of the deck. Both our float zones are gone and there's tons of two retreat Pokemon they can drag up throughout the game. So if he does want to go stall mode on us, he can. Attachment to Articuno, he still believes. Still a believer. Brock's Grit. Wow. It's a lot of value. To be fair. They're going to keep one water in the discard pile for Aqua Patch plays, I imagine. Just to collect for now, though. Top deck like a god. Oh, why didn't we attach it? Boo. Okay, I'll do it this turn. Oh, so sad, so sad, sadness. Is there any justice in the world? Okay, we've seen Elixir. And an attachment, is he going in? Is he coming for me? Can he Lysander here? I would imagine so. Does he race on a Shaman? Don't know how confident he is with V Star in the back, he might just try and hit like Excadrill or something. Another choice band comes down. Fear Seeker, probably Lysander. Yeah, I imagine it's Shaman here. Too crazy to go Excadrill, I think. Should be too crazy to go Excadrill. Needs all three heads. Like a 25% chance if he has the reflip for all three heads. Oh, he's just going to end us anyway. Okay. Okay. A reasonable decision. Uh, attach the metal and draw to DCE. I just can't win. Damn it, Delmoise. Here's a gold aqua patch coming in. Lapras going to be getting buff. I would imagine.
Maybe not. Maybe he just has to race with us. Who knows? Yeah, it's going to be Lapras. Alright, let's see how lucky this Articuno is going to get. Get out of here. <laughs> oh, good. Very good. 12.5 on the first try. Sure. Sure. That's just fantastic. Get rid of the choice bands. Come on, Oranguru, don't let me down. Yes, Oranguru. That's what I like to see. Uh, is it going to be a Sycamore here? I think it is going to be a Sycamore. I want to hit Delmise really badly. Okay, Stretcher is a Delmise. This puts a lot of pressure on him, because we can carry the Articuno with one hit. I'm also going to put back some energy, I think. Actually, no. It's not great off end. Actually, it is good off end, because I imagine this gets knocked out next turn. So These are cards I want. What does he promote here? I guess it's the other Articuno. Or it's the Victini. It's one of the two. Victini, maybe. Because they can actually tank a hit, because I'm only doing 60. Victini is probably the smartest play here. That tanky teeny. Teeny tiny tank. Oh. I would not have chosen that target. Thanks for the free damage, though. Okay. Interesting. All the bling. All the gear, but no idea. Here comes an elixir. Your boy, trainer's mail. Getting an aqua patch. Are they going to go for the big triple flip again? Looks like it. Looks like they're going for triple flip life. Uh -oh. I mean, it worked well last time, so... Why not, right? Gonna see Ultra Ball. Grabbing maybe like a Lele for an N. Maybe. Who knows? How many N are in the discard pile? Just one? Yeah. Lele for N, maybe. Maybe shame into dick with cards. I don't know. Maybe just more thinning before an Anna or a Sycamore. Yeah, shaman. Seems fine. Like Lysander wins us the game anyway, so now I'll put a shaman down. Taking their time deciding. Maybe it's where their attachment wants to go, is their decision. Just gonna shame in for four. Hmm. There's a aqua patch. Oh boy, we're gonna see the flips again. <sighs> Hmm. 
another radical patch. Why not? I guess it would be a retreat patch to this guy. Yep, there's the retreat and the patch. Really digging the full, full rarity. That brock must have cost him loads. Oh, went to the other Lapras. Interesting. Interesting. Oh, he has his manual attachment for turn. That'll be why. Well, this is a reflip. Okay, we're alive. Which means it's over. Great news, everyone. We got there. Let's go drill, boys. Comfortably racing the world with many, many map claws. Nice. So, it's proving that it can beat some other decks, not just the stuff it's trying to target, so, um, yeah, is this good? Is this terrible? Somewhere in the middle, I imagine. Um, I doubt anyone will be going to Birmingham with this on the top of their list of decks to play, um, but it's proven to me that it's not just a complete waste of time to start thinking about the deck. Let's list one more time, we had some fun, interesting games. And uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think about the archetype, my list, the channel. Uh, welcome if you're new, of course. Subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, leave all your comments down below for us. Um, got a really cool video actually tomorrow. Um, Going to be talking about all the different Garbodor variants, why they're good, which ones are the best picks, uh, which ones are better in certain mech games and stuff. So stick around for that. That should be a cool one. For now though, it has been Joe from Omnifolk and I'll be seeing you guys next time. Cheers.